Hi, my name is Megan Churchwell, and I'm the curator of the Puget Sound Navy Museum, located in downtown Bremerton, Washington. Tonight, I am sharing our photography exhibit, featuring the work of local photographer H.E. Whale, who has quite a unique story. A veteran of the Spanish-American War, Whale led a colorful life and operated the humorously named Prince of Wales Photography Studio in downtown Bremerton. Before I get to all that, I wanted to give you a peek behind the curtain at the exhibit research process here at the museum. This exhibit was a bit unusual for us because we usually know quite a bit about the photographers we feature in this gallery before we start putting together the exhibit. Uh, but this one was a little bit different because I kept seeing all these photos sprinkled throughout our exhibit collection, and they all said Prince of Wales. And I started to get curious about the man who had come up with this very inventive business name. And as I started digging, I found that it seemed like everyone who'd been in Bremerton for long enough had photos of his tucked away. But the story behind them seemed to be a bit splintered. Uh, so I set out to find more about the man behind that creativity. So to start this process, I went online uh, to Ancestry.com, as I imagine a few of you have as well, and was able to piece together military records, marriage records, the census, phone book listings, and a few other sources uh, that uh, give us a look at the life of Mr. Herbert Whale. And that story is what follows. Herbert Ernest Whale was born in Rock Springs, Wyoming in 1876. Now at the time, this would have been a very rural place. Wyoming was not even a state until 1890. The 1880 census counts a population of just 763 people in Whale's hometown. But despite this very rural upbringing, Whale became a photographer very early in his life. As a teenager, he captured this stereoscopic photo of a parade in his hometown, and it's now in the collection of his hometown's museum, which I think is pretty special. Now, Whale was raised with a younger brother and sister, and then in his early 20s, perhaps eager to escape small-town Wyoming life, he enlisted in the U.S. Army, just in time for the Spanish-American War. He served as one of 125 members of Wyoming's Light Artillery Battery A, which was sent over to the Philippines in 1898. And this image shows members of that battery, uh, though we don't know if Whale is one of the soldiers in the photo. When that unit was sent home, Whale continued his service in the Philippines with the U.S. 36th Infantry, finally leaving the Army in 1901. Now, he must have been very proud of his years spent in the Army. Once he made his way to Bremerton, he became a charter member of the city's VFW organization. Next, he disappears from the historical record for a couple of years, which was not all that unusual given the, the time period. And by the time he pops back up, it's 1907 and he has arrived in Bremerton. He might have been drawn by the promise of the Puget Sound Navy Yard, which would have had somewhere around 3,000 employees at the time he arrived, making it the largest employer in the region and a pretty obvious choice if he was looking for work here in the Pacific Northwest. The 1909 city directory lists him as an electrical helper at the shipyard. And uh, for a few years, in about 1910 to 1920, he lived in an apartment in downtown Bremerton at 821 Washington Avenue. So for those of you who are familiar with the city, that's pretty close to downtown and the shipyard. He later moves to other locations, always very close into Bremerton, near the shipyard and the downtown, including uh, some other places on Washington Avenue, as well as 1339 Warren Avenue. In 1916, Whale marries Bremerton resident Mary Maud Riley. Her husband had died a couple years earlier, leaving her with three small children. And together, Herbert and Mary would go on to have two sons, though both of them died in childhood. Whale would end up outliving his first wife, Mary, as well. Now, very quickly after his return to Bremerton, he gets back into photography. As early as 1911, he's listed in the city directory at 400 Washington Avenue, offering 
photographer, interiors, flashlights, postcards, Kodak work carefully done. Next, he forms a business venture with fellow photographer Thomas Turner. They were known then as Turner Whale Photography, and they were located at 104 Front Street, right on the downtown Bremerton waterfront, from about 1913 to 1917. And then finally, Whale launches his solo career by rebranding as Prince of Wales. He's downtown on Pacific Avenue, uh, first at 518 Pacific Avenue from about 1918 to the late 20s. And at that time, that would have been the address of the Elks Club. And then he moves to 324 Pacific Avenue, which is the Dietz Building shown in the photo here. That building, of course, still standing today. And his studio was there for several decades until he retired in 1949. Now, from these studios, he photographed local landmarks and residents and turned his camera towards scenes of the shipyard and its workers as well. Now, the following slides are just a couple of his images taken around town, uh, though they weren't a focus of my research since, of course, I'm at the Navy Museum. Uh, they're still really cool, and I wanted the chance to share them with you all. So first up, of course, uh, is this downtown uh, view of Pacific Avenue. Uh, this would would have been taken about the, the corner of 2nd and Pacific there, that building, of course, still standing today. This would have been taken from the Seattle to Bremerton Ferry as you're pulling into the Seattle dock. Uh, the Coleman dock, of course, there in the front. And then if you look towards the back of the image on the right side, that is Smith Tower. Very recognizable landmark there. And here's the Union High School football team in 1911. Uh, so at that time, Whale was very much one of those photographers that you would call anytime uh, you had a group and you wanted a, a group photo. Now here's the main yard, uh, shipyard entrance uh, right in downtown Bremerton. Uh, it's right next to the present home of the Puget Sound Navy Museum. Uh, now, in, in the background, you can see that big warehouse there, Building 290, still stands today. Pretty recognizable spot for those of you who are familiar with the shipyard. Now, Whale often visited the shipyard's piers to capture images of shipyard work and all the warships that were docked here. Seems a little strange today since, of course, Civilians can't just wander down to the piers and take photos of the ships, but back then, uh, that certainly would have been allowed. Uh, so in 1911, during one of those visits, uh, he captured this image of cruisers, the battleship USS Oregon, and of course the ever-present cranes that are essential for all the heavy lifting required at a bustling Navy yard. Now, one of the biggest changes that he would have been at the shipyard to photograph was the addition of dry dock 2 in 1913. Dry docks are really essential to shipyard work because they allow water to be drained from around the ship so that you can get all the way under the hull. Now this dry dock was 867 feet long and 145 feet wide. At the time it was completed, it was the largest U.S. Navy dry dock in the world, so it was a very big deal here in Bremerton. Not only was he there for the last stone ceremony of the dry dock, but he also photographed the battleship USS Oregon, which would be the forced warship to visit dry dock 2. Local Navy work and workers were a common subject of Wales photography. Shown here are Naval Ammunition Depot, officers, and employees in 1921. Whale was also there for the launching of USS Nitro and USS Pyro, two very appropriately named ammunition ships. Uh, they were launched here at the Puget Sound Navy Yard in December of 1919. This is perhaps Whale's most famous photo, uh, thanks to his excellent vantage point at the end of the dry dock. During his time living and working next to the Puget Sound Navy Yard, Whale would have seen it go through immense changes. When he arrived in 1907, the shipyard had a single dry dock and employed less than 5,000 workers. Now this image shows the growth that had already occurred in the shipyard and the city of Bremerton surrounding it 
by 1925, so this would have been about midway through Whale's photography career. Now, I'm not quite sure how he managed to capture this aerial photo, but I do have a hunch. A business called Gorst Air Transportation, which was a seaplane offering transportation between Seattle and Bremerton, would have been getting its start right about that time. And uh, again, it's totally just a guess, but I can really picture the proprietor of that service, Vern Gorst, and Herbert Whale being fast friends. Whale's work not only captured important milestones in the shipyard's history, but also more lighthearted moments, like this baseball team from USS Philadelphia. It was probably taken between 1907 and 1912, when the ship was serving as a receiving ship for the shipyard. Now, in that era, it would have been very common for ships to form baseball teams. They would compete against other ships' teams, as well as civilian squads at home and all around the world, wherever the ship In addition to ships' crews and teams of workers, Whale also photographed individual sailors. And photos like these would have been sent home to the sailors' families. In fact, the one shown here is actually a postcard. This would have been a very common industry in port cities like Bremerton, uh, because sailors wanted to sit for a portrait right before boarding a Navy vessel and shipping out. So for a photographer like Whale, this would have been a great opportunity to uh, support his business and allow him to uh, do more creative pursuits that maybe didn't pay as well as this sort of. Now all the photos that I've shown so far were taken between about 1910 and the mid-1930s. That's when Whale was at his most active as a photographer. He would eventually retire from the business altogether in the late 1940s. But even as he wound down that side of his business, he remained active in other creative pursuits. For instance, he also dabbled in inventing. He was an avid marksman, so his inventions centered around both gun accessories and photography equipment. In 1950, he filed for this patent for a camera flash attachment. He also took up pistol shooting at the age of 60, and apparently he was pretty good at it. He was soon competing in national championships, and he won more than 140 marksmanship medals. A newspaper article on his accomplishments would nickname him a Pistol Pack and Papa. Now this image is one of the only photos I ever located that featured the photographer himself, and it shows Whale showing off some of his medals. It's from the Kitsap County Historical Society collection. After he, re After he retired from the photography studio, in 1949, he moved into the Washington Veterans Home, known as Retzel, in Port Orchard. And of the time he spent at Retzel, he would write, Never happier or more contented in my lifetime. I'm very sorry I didn't do it years ago. It's a wonderful spot. Even then, he must have led a very colorful life. His file from Retzel, which is now at the State Archives, is filled with notes about Whale's travels to marksmanship competitions and to walking races over in Issaquah, as well as the occasional note chastising him for practicing his shooting on the retirement center grounds. Imagine they were none too happy to have him uh, shooting in the backyard there. While living at Retzel, he married his second wife, Myrtle, in 1951. And he remained at Retzel until shortly before his death in 1962 at the age of 86. This brings the story of Herbert Whale to an end. Uh, if this tale has inspired you to take a closer look at Whale's photography, I'd like to invite you to visit the Puget Sound Navy Museum. We are open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day but Tuesdays, and admission is always free. Thanks for joining me, and I'll be in the comments section to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.